Father, you are worthy to be honored. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be loved. You are worthy, Lord, to be lifted high in this night. And Lord Jesus, we give you all the praise and all the honor now and forevermore. Lord, we want to love. Our, we want to pour our love upon you in this night. Lord, you are worthy, Lord. You are worthy, Jesus. Let's just sing that one more time. You are worthy of it all. Let's just give you, Jesus, everything tonight. Of it all, for from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. You worthy God, you worthy of it all. You. there we are why don't you just lift your hands to God everybody online as well just lift your hands to the Lord I believe the Lord wants to shift things tonight in our lives that we will understand who we worship and why we worship and why we have to be pure so father I want to pray Lord as our hands are lifted to you Lord Jesus father we are very much aware Lord that nothing can be done without the presence and the person of the Holy Spirit father I want to pray in this night that we will become again like David said Lord as a dear panther of the streams of living water, Lord, so our soul longs for you, God. Lord, there's nothing that we want to do without you, Father, not by might nor by power, but by the Spirit of the Lord. And Father, I want to pray again tonight, Lord, that out of our hearts will come a true worship. For you have come to seek worshipers, Lord, and worship you in spirit and in truth. And Lord, we give you all the praise and the honor, Lord. And I pray in this night, Heavenly Father. Lord, come and reset, come and recalibrate every heart that is in this place. Every person that watches online, Lord, across all of the platforms. Father, we thank you, Lord, that you are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be adored. And thank you that you've given us the breath to do so. In the name, higher than any other name, we pray. The name of Jesus Christ. Lord, Holy Spirit, come and move amongst the people in this night. Lord, come and move in this place. Lord, this is your place. This is your church. We are your people called for this hour to worship you like no other time before. In the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. And all of God's people say, Amen and Amen. Can you give Jesus just 10 seconds of praise and power? Come on, let's just give him some praise. Just give him some praise. Come on, can we do better than that? Just 10 seconds, 10 seconds, 10 seconds, 10 seconds. Come on, one more time. Amen and amen. You're welcome to be seated. Thank you to the worship team. Uh, if I can just ask the keyboard and uh, coordinator will stay with me. Amen. Are you expecting tonight? Uh, can I ask that again? Are you expecting tonight? <sighs> Listen, it's good to be in the house of God. Amen? And um, I want to speak to you tonight about, about purity. And um, I want to go to a scripture. The Lord just changed my scriptures, guys, there at the back. So just flow with me. Um, as we were standing there, God just shifted everything. You know what's amazing about God? Um, when He gives instructions, it's not a discussion. 
Are you with me? It's normally commandments. So when the Lord says we do, amen. Um, and so in this church, we are sons and daughters of God. And so we want to be obedient to His voice. We want to do what He says because He is the life. Amen. He's not a life. He's the life. He's not a way. It's the way. He's not a truth. He's the truth. He's not a begotten. He's the begotten. He's the only son. There is no other. There might be many sons that will come, but there's only the son of God. Come on, are you guys with me? So I want to go to John chapter number 14 and verse number 15. Guys, if you can, go there for me. John chapter number 14, verse number 15, 16, 17, and 18. And then we're going to jump to Luke chapter number 7. So I'll take you there. Luke and John chapter number 15, verse number 14, verse number 15. John chapter number 14, verse number 15. Save me worship. Save me purity. Okay, I'm going to speak about that. John chapter number 14, verse number 15 says this, If you love me, if you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and He will give you another helper, that He may abide with you forever. The Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees Him nor knows Him, but you know Him. If, for He will dwell, it's not, sorry, that's not if they for he dwells with you and will be in you i will not leave you as orphans i will come to you i want to read that again for you because i'm going to pull revelation out of this for you if you love me do my commandments save me do do my commandments and I will pray the Father, and He will give you another helper, that He may abide with you forever. The Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees Him nor knows Him. But you know Him, for He dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Look at that scripture, verse number 15 again. If you love me, keep my commandments. I want you to understand first and foremost on the subject of us being holy in this hour like no other time in history i believe we are in a season right now and i think we're going to be there for quite a while where the bible makes it very clear the season that we are in the 2 timothy 3 season and i don't want to expand too much on that but what i can say is we are in a season where people are worshiping the wrong things and we are prioritizing the wrong things and we are prioritizing the wrong people and we're prioritizing the wrong circumstances and the effect of the wrong thing that we worship is the result of the wrong stuff that we worship is we become what we behold and because we worship the wrong thing we become the wrong thing are you there are you with me so you have to understand, Jesus says, if you love me, keep my commandments. I want you, if you are taking notes, everybody online and everybody in the house, please listen to me. Love keeps you and love gives you parameters immediately. In other words, if you are ever in love of anybody or of anything, it gives you a parameter and it gives you guidelines. Those guidelines are not there established by law, it's established by love. If you love me, do my commandments. I want you to understand why people are not wanting to be holy. Because they believe holiness is a set of rules where Jesus believes holiness is a relationship kept by the covenant of love. Come on, are you with me? It's not, you have to understand, let me say that again. The reason why most people think holiness is religious or religiosity is because they think to be holy means to keep a set of rules. No, you keep a set of boundaries because you are in love. Love gives you boundaries. If I love Shannon, which I've been married to for 17 years, thank be to God that she's beautiful and pretty and smart and everything else. But for the last 17 years, you have to understand love and covenant gives you the boundaries of your commitment. That doesn't mean you won't have opportunities to choose other things. It just means you keep yourself from choosing other things because you're in love. So love is the motivation. Covenant is the reason. Oh, come on, can I say that again? Love is the motivation, covenant is the reason. And Jesus, look at Jesus. Je uh, Jesus says this in the Bible. He says, and I will pray the Father and He will give you another helper. I want you to see here, if you don't love Him, you don't qualify for the Holy Spirit. Can I say that again? If you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and He will give you another helper that He may abide with you forever. The reason why many people are not helped is because many people are not in love. Purity is about understanding that you are loved and to be loved. 
because it's the Father that loves the Son. It's the Son that loves the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit that loves the Son. It's the Son that loves the Father. So Holy Spirit will take you directly to Jesus. Jesus will take you immediately to the Father. It is the Father that says you are now home and you're called children of God. Without Jesus, we will still be lost. And without the Holy Spirit, we'll still not be found. Because the Bible says in John 6, 63, it's the Holy Spirit that draws men unto salvation. Come on, are you with me? So we didn't choose Him. He chose us. Let me go a little step further. When He knitted you together in your, in your mother's womb, He had you in mind. Long before the foundations of the earth, the Bible says He predestined us. And so in this season of confusion, one thing we shouldn't be confused about is who we love and why we love. Come on, guys. Are you there? Give Jesus just some praise and some lift. So you have to understand, this is, this is what you have to understand about love. And if you guys are online, tell me where you're watching from and, and share the stream, get it out there. But I, I want you to understand something. One of the true reasons why people don't opt for purity is they believe that they are not worth purity. Because it's like this, why will you defile something expensive? Whatever you value, you look after. Are you with me? Whatever you value, you look after. The Bible says, how will it, how will it gain a man or what will it pro prosper a man if he gains the whole world yet he loses his soul? I want to tell you tonight, we might not lose our soul all at once. What we do do is we devalue our own value and we sell ourselves off little bit by little bit. And we do that by accommodating things into our lives which is untrue to who we really are. We watch things that we don't supposed to be watching. We sell our hearts off. We, we sell our integrity off. We sell, our, uh, we sell things off little bit by little bit. And the reason why we... Um, you understand what I'm saying? Because over a given, the, the worst thing that can happen of any one of us is if we say we have God, yet we don't have Him. Come on, are you guys okay? Come on, just give Jesus some praise just for 10 seconds. I want you to understand this tonight. Because you see, this is Luke, Luke chapter number 7 uh, gives us a very clear indication on this. And I won't read the whole text for you, but I... I'll read for you some. Luke chapter number 7, guys, on the screens. Luke 7, verse 36 to 48. Now you can read the whole body of Scripture. I just want to read a certain part. Then one of the Pharisees asked him to eat with him. Please note, Pharisee. And he went to the Pharisee's house and sat down to eat. And behold, the woman of the city who was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at the table at the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster flask of fragrant oil, stood at, be, stood at his feet behind him, weeping. And she began to wash his feet with her tears and wiped them with the hair on her head. And she kissed his feet and anointed them with fragrant oil. Now when the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he spoke to himself, saying, This man, if he were a prophet, would know who and what of a manner of woman is touching him for she is a sinner and jesus answered and said to him simon let me read for you simon i have something to say to you so he said teacher say it there was a certain creditor who had two debtors one who owed 500 denarii and another 50 and when they had nothing which to repay he freely forgave them both tell me therefore which of them will love me more Simon answered and said, I suppose the one who gave you more. And Jesus says, you have judged rightly. Then he turned to the woman and said to Simon, I want you to see this. He turns to the woman, but he speaks to Simon. Because Jesus will always respond to worship and he will correct religiosity. Let me say that again. He always responds to worship because he came to seek out worshipers. You know why the devil hates you so much? Because the word Lucifer means one that reflects the glory, not produce the glory. Whereas Satan, the word Bar Satan, means one that goes further and further and further away from the glory. In other words, Satan is losing territory all the time. In actual fact, according to the book of Revelations, one day when you see the devil standing in the midst of the assembly, you're going to say, is, are you the one that caused all of the chaos? Really, that's scripturally accurate. And so because God gave the, uh, the enemy a first right to rule and he messed it up and then God gave the man the job to worship him, that's why one of the reasons why the devil hates you because he can never, ever, 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 ever do what you are doing. He can never worship God again. 
And so he has to destroy that what God loves. So if you ever want to know what God loves, and look at what the enemy attacks. Let me say that again. If you ever want to know what God loves, look at what Satan attacks. Why does he attack marriages so much? Because God loves marriages. Why? A marriage is God's idea of a whole household. Man did a design, marriage God did. Why do you think, uh, why do you think Satan is so heavily after young people's hearts and their souls and their minds? Because he understands if he can wound them when they're young, they're going to grow up messed up. So he goes for them young. You say, where is that in the Bible? Well, Paul was Saul. He stood as a young man approving the killing of Stephen. He had the coats. Satan got him young. And because he sell off his heart when he was young, when he became old, he just became an older twisted version of a young version that was already taken captive. Come on, are you there? And so how does the enemy take uh, take us captive right now? It's very simple. What we worship. Because what you worship, you become. The only way that we will be able to go through the season victoriously if we become what we worship. It has to be the Lord. Are you guys with me? That is why when the Lord led the people out of Israel, you have to understand the first instruction they had was to worship God. Why? He wanted to rid them of their slave mentality. You cannot be a slave and worship a king and still believe that you are a slave if you're part of a kingdom. If you worship a king that owns a kingdom, it should change your mind that you're a son, a prince, or a princess. Are you with me? But you have to understand the spirit of the world is so strong. You can have all the things in the world, yet you can carry an orphan spirit inside of you. You can still carry a spirit of a slave. Come on, guys, are you there? God literally gives the Israelites all the silver and gold that they might have. God gives them everything, yet they they keep on having the mentality of slaves. Eventually, that mentality of slave reduces God to a golden calf. And God gets very upset of them. Are you there? Come on, guys, are you with me? Are you okay? So you become what you worship. And if you look at the lady of of the alabaster jar, you have to understand one or two things about this. Jesus is invited to the Pharisee's house, yet yet he is never drawn from. In other words, he's in company of Simon, yet he's never acknowledged as king. So we can, this gives us a secret. You can be close to Jesus, yet you never change. You can be in the company of a church, yet you never shift your mind or shift your attitude or shift your heart. I said it last week Sunday uh, at, at Durban when I preached at our Durban church. And I said here as well. You know, last week Sunday morning, I saw people weeping in the presence of God. This morning, I saw it again. And I saw last week Sunday, there was a whole family row. And God was touching. You could see the Spirit of the Lord on the, on the, the, the wife where her hands were in the air. She was crying. The young man was crying next to her. And the father stood like this. And I said to myself, what a, what a pitiful sight to see the same God touching, changing, experiencing the worship of the woman, the worship of the son, and yet the father's heart stays unchanged in the same atmosphere. How is that possible? Easy, hardened hearts. Are you guys with me? And one of my prayers is in this season that we will not have hard hearts, but that we will soft, have soft, pliable hearts that can worship God in spirit and in truth. Come on, are you with me? Come on, just give Jesus some praise. And one of the things that, that, that I, I want you to understand is this, is that why will you, because you have to understand and um, You have to understand something here about the scripture. Why will you break? Why will you break a year of alabaster jar? Because you have to understand the reason why Mary was going for Jesus is because she wanted wholeness. She wanted wholeness. But to receive wholeness, she needed to sacrifice. And she needed to sacrifice something that would have cost her. Guys, I want you to listen to me very carefully tonight. I can change with the Lord can change your lives by the sermon. True worship will always cost you something. Because Mary was after wholeness. 
Mary wanted wholeness. She lived her whole life as a prostitute getting money. In other words, she was looked after because she had a ventured alabaster jar full of fragrant oil that was a year's wages. In other words, she had finances. But she had finances at the expense of the health of her soul. And so she grew tired of the superficial fixes that couldn't make a whole. That tells me something that she went to Jesus to get wholeness. But she sacrificed everything she had because when a Jewish woman will break an alabaster jar, it was a sign of covenant. She didn't just break a jar. No, 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 no. When, when a, a Jewish woman will break a jar, an alabaster jar, it means four different things. Reason, point number one, it means I've given up all my other options of healing. Sign number two, I've given up all my other options of deliverance. Three, I've given up all my other options to free myself. For, sign number four, I've given all other options up to marry myself. So when she was breaking that alabaster jar, she was not just breaking the alabaster jar, she was giving in to everything. She was looking at Jesus as the final option. Oh, may the fear of God hit her heart. She didn't come to Jesus to have an experience. She came to Jesus because she wanted to change. And for her to make the exchange, she knew it's going to cost her something. You have to understand this side of life, you're going to have the opportunity to give God sacrifice of worship that you'll not be able to give Him in heaven. Because on the earth we do the sacrifices, not in heaven. Because heaven was sacrificed so that we could gain heaven. So sacri- listen to me again, that you understand. Jesus sacrificed Himself. The Father sacrificed the Son so that you can gain heaven. When you're in heaven one day, you're never going to sacrifice to God. You're just going to worship Him. So the sacrifices is this side of life. When I stood next to my mom worshiping the Lord as she goes into heaven, that was a sacrifice of worship. When the Lord gives us instructions to bless this one or bless that one, that is our sacrifices. You'll only have the opportunity once. Come on, guys, are you there? Do you understand what I'm saying? The places of what we allow in our lives is often the thing that keeps us away from wholeness. And the reason that many of us are not worshiping the Lord in spirit and in truth is we don't yet realize we're broken. We're still in a fix me program. We believe we can fix ourselves. Come on, are you with me? Come on, guys, just give Jesus some praise. Come on, I want to help tonight. Save me worship. So when this lady, when she broke the, when Mary broke the alabaster jar, she was doing a massive exchange of God. She was believing that He carries the oil that can fix her from the inside out. She believed that Jesus was the carrier of wholeness. And for her to access wholeness, she, need, she knew she needed to pay something that is worth something to her. And so she paid for wholeness in a sense and I said in inverted commas because she didn't really pay for it but she went as a broken vessel she gave him everything to gain wholeness and the Bible says that it's interesting when, the, when Mary by the way it's, she was not a prostitute prostitution is something that interrupted her who she really was was a worshiper because she breaks everything on Jesus and Simon judges her In this season that we are in right now, you have to understand the world is becoming very intellectual because we have more information at our hands than any other season before. But simultaneously, we're becoming more godless than any other time and any other season and any other decade ever before us. Because the more information we get, the less our hearts will be palatable or will be open for the gospel and that's why in this hour God will pour out his spirit uh, I tell you lavishly upon his people because he wants to prove to his people that he's still God and his people will, will need to prove to the world that we believe he is God by what and who we worship Because if our lifestyles on a Monday to a Saturday is different than our lifestyles on a Sunday, the world calls us hypocrites. They say, you don't have a testimony. 
because what you do from Monday to Saturday doesn't look like what you do on Sunday. Are you there? Are you with me? And so we have to give him something worthy to be worshipped and worthy to adore and something that he can use. You see, again, I say, you have to know this. She breaks the alabaster jar. Are you, are you there? She breaks the alabaster jar on Jesus. And I love, it, love the fact about Jesus that Jesus doesn't disappoint. In other words, he corrects Simon with a story. He says, Simon, who has been forgiven the most, you or her? That's actually the story. And what it's actually trying to make Simon understand is, Simon, you are guilty worse than this woman. Because he's still busy judging. She's already getting fixed. You have to understand wholeness comes through worship. Worship introduces you to wholeness. Wholeness introduces you automatically to Jesus. And so the question really is, is what is what do we what do we set as our highest worth on the planet? What is the most important for us? Because whatever is most important for us, we will worship that. That's why the Bible says in Romans chapter number one, during the season that we will, we will be in now and until we see the Lord, we'll see four types of worship. We'll see the worship of four-footed things. We're seeing that. We, see the, we will see the worship of birds. We'll see the worship of creeping things. And then the Bible says the last thing that man will worship is themselves. Are you with me? But this is why this season is so important to worship the Lord because I believe one of the last movements that we'll see over the planet Earth is a worshiping church that worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. And as we worship the Lord, His glory will invade worship. You have to understand the Bible says, and the earth shall be filled with the glory of God. God wants the earth to fill the glory. How does He fill, how does he fill the, the how does He fill the earth of His glory by worship? Because worship is not to get God present. Worship, he, worship is worshiping because, Him because He is present. So worship is not to get Him here. Come on, worship is because He is here. Are you there? Are you with me? Do you understand what I'm saying? And so there's something about understanding brokenness to understand worship. And there's something about worship that gets you clean and gets you whole again. Because you have to understand a passion for purity is stemming, stems out of a passion for worship. Let me say it again. Purity and worship equals one another. Because what you worship, you'll become like. So we shouldn't hunt purity, we should follow worship. Because whatever we worship, we become like. Are you with me? Because it is impossible to love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your strength, yet be intertwined with the things of this world. It means that our hearts are then divided, and our souls are then divided, and our attention is then, then divided. Then the Bible says, how can a divided man ask me anything and get anything from me? He's double in all of his way. How can a double-minded man get anything from me? One of the reasons why the Lord doesn't answer many prayers is because he is not blind. Jesus said it. He said, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far away from me. In other words, they say the right things. They say hallelujah. They say Jesus is Lord. They use all the right terminology, yet their hearts are far away from the Lord. Can I tell you what is the true sign of a worshiper? Sacrifice. Romans chapter number 12, verse number 1 says we are living sacrifices. True sacrifice means nobody needs to tell you to do it. Nobody put, needs to put a gun against your head and tell you to do it. Nobody should force you to do it. You shouldn't even ask to be paid to do it. No, you should become a living sacrifice because it's your choice. It is your choice to be sacrificed. It is your choice to give Him something worthy to be sacrificed. If it costs you nothing, heaven will not be moved. But if it costs you something, heaven will be moved by what it costs you. Are you with me? Come on, church. You have to understand God is looking for a people once again that will worship Him in spirit and in truth. But it has to cost us something. Christianity without blood is not power. Satan looks for blood. God looks for blood. 
If it doesn't cost your flesh anything, then you're, you're not busy with Christianity. <laughs> oh, can I have a God praise you? Hallelujah, amen moment just though. <laughs> you see, the Bible says Jesus introduces the Father like this. He said, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. It just stop there. Just, just stay with me for two seconds. Our Father which in heaven, hallowed be thy name. He introduces him as Father, but he keeps him holy. Our Father, which art in heaven, holy be your name. Father keeps him, brings him into proximity. Holiness keeps him at a distance. You see, the reason why we don't worship him like we should, can I tell you why? We become familiar with this God that we serve. We make him like ourselves. One of the greatest dangers in the church that I've been around for 17 years. I grew up in a church. I've seen it all, or most of it. And I can tell you this, the greatest danger is to think you know. The Bible says, as soon as you think you know, it proves to us you know nothing. Scripture that I've just quoted. Bible says, don't become familiar with the Lord. Holiness keeps him at a distance. Father brings him into reach. But he's a holy God. In other words, he's so holy, by the way, that when the devil or when Lucifer defiled himself, God threw him out. God said, that's it, out. And Jesus said, I saw Satan fall like lightning. He was given the position as the covering cherubim. He's one of the three archangels mentioned in your Bible. He had a position that because he had pride in his own heart and defiled his own garments, God said, out. I will not let anything unholy into my presence. Out. It is a holy God. It is a holy spirit. It is the holy word. Scriptures is not to be negotiated with. Scripture is commandments. When the Lord says love one another, that is not a suggestion. When love, the Lord says, if you love me, keep my commandments, that's also not a suggestion. You see what's happening in the world right now is that there's so many things that are contending for your heart. TikTok is fighting for you. Insta is fighting for you. Facebook is fighting for you. Cheap sex is fighting for you. Quick ways to make money is fighting for you. Negotiating your soul with people that really don't love you is fighting for you. Relationships that are not really going to be there for the long run is fighting for your attention. What's worse, busyness is fighting for you. The spirit of busyness in this world is fighting for people more than ever before. People want to try to make a living, yet they forget the God that gives them breath to have life. What will it prosper a man if he gains the whole world, yet he loses his soul? No, no, no. Jesus said, be busy. Jesus said, I'm busy all the time, by the way. Jesus said, I'm always about my father's business. He was a very busy man. In actual fact, if you study Jesus' work ethics, he worked about 12 hours a day. He wasn't lazy. Many people sit around, you know, they tell you, oh, no, God's going to open a door. God's going to open no door. Faith of outworks is absolutely dead. No, you do it as He tells you to do it. Then you see how He opens up the hall. It's true. Come on, are you with me? Come on, let's just give Jesus some praise. I hope the truth is hitting Him. You see, you cannot worship the Lord and you cannot be pure if you don't understand your value. Jesus understands your value. That's why He sacrifices. He sacrifices Himself because He understands the value of your salvation. Now, why will we think about it? Why will we put our salvation <laughs> up for grabs again? Can I tell you why? Because we don't understand how much we are valued in heaven. We don't understand our value before the Lord. But the Bible makes it very clear. God will not always dwell with man, and He doesn't, and he doesn't want to always dwell with man. He's limited man's days to 120 years. And that's it, because he doesn't, the Bible says He's made up His mind. He doesn't always want to dwell with man. That's why you have to give up this tent and go to be with Him one day. 
But as you are in this tent, in this season, one of the things that we need to make very sure of is we need to become who he, he is in us and through us. That's why the Bible says, imitate me as I imitate Christ. Paul the Apostle, 1 Corinthians 11 verse number 1. Are you there? I would say, you know, one of the things that, let me just throw out this last two thoughts for you. If you love me, keep my commandments. If you love me, keep my commandments and I will pray the Father and He will give you another helper. Please listen to me. Love without the Holy Spirit is absolutely impossible. You cannot love nobody without the supernatural help and assistance of the Holy Spirit. Because people are people. Are you there? So we have to understand in the season that God wants to give us the baptism of love, Romans chapter number 5, verse number 5. But you cannot love the world if you don't understand that you are loved by the Lord. Come on, am I getting through to somebody? Is, are, you, are your heart burning inside of you? Because this is the thing that I want you to understand. Why will Jesus, let me say it like this, why will Jesus leave a crowd? He leaves a crowd, he goes for one person, the man of Gadara, one person. And if you read that whole story, what's interesting about the context of the story is this, that man knows Jesus is his only and his last option for freedom. Because he tried everything else to get clean and he can't get clean. He tried the rocks, he cuts himself, but he doesn't get clean. He breaks the chains off himself, but he doesn't get free. Then he sees a man, by the way, can I just give you some revelation? The man of Gadara has never met Jesus. It's the demons inside of the man that knows Jesus. So when Jesus' foot hits the shore, it is the demons inside recognizing who Jesus is. You are the son of God. Why have you come here before the appointed time? And the man full of 6,728 demons, a whole legion of demons. That man runs with everything he can to get to Jesus. Why was he doing it? Because he was aiming for wholeness. He was aiming to get free. He was aiming to be restored. And again, Jesus does not disappoint. Come on, are you guys with me? There's something about brokenness that produces pure worship. What I love about the story is Jesus does not question this man. What did he do? Why is he like this? Why is he full of devils? Why? Why? There's no questioning like this. It's just come out of him. Are you there? Because once you're a son of God, you don't need to negotiate with God about your freedom. Oh, can I say that again? Once you're a son and daughter of God, you don't need to negotiate why He needs to set you free. He is fully convinced that you need to be free. You just need to come to Him as you are, without any shame or guile, and just say, Lord, here I am as I am. And He says, I'll take you, I'll clean you, I'll make you as white as snow. I'll take your sins as far as the east is from the west. Come on! We need a revival again of purity and passion for worship. Because what you're passionate about, you're going to make time for. You see, passion makes you do crazy stuff. Crazy makes you give money away that you don't have. It makes you drive distances that you don't want to. It makes you spend time that you don't have. Why? Passion. 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 The Bible says Jesus Christ clothed you of everything you have for purity and for godliness and for righteousness. You have everything it takes to be successful. Come on, are you guys there? But we have to choose. We have, and it's going to cost us something. Because if it doesn't cost you something, then you are putting nothing into the ground. And if you don't put a seed in the ground, nothing can grow. You can all the day long, but if you don't cost you something, nothing happens in the supernatural on the side of convenience and comfort. No, it costs you prayer. It costs you to come out of that bed. It costs you less time on that pillow. It costs you walking away from the Netflix. It costs you waving a bye to a certain relationship. It will cost you something to come closer to the King. And please don't go right off your boss now and say, hey, the pastor said so, so, so. No, no, no. 
be a person that seeks the king and as you get closer to the light the light will sort out every impurity that is around you that's why you cannot dream big dreams and sit with the fools you have when you dream big dreams you have to elevate your company because your company determines where you're gonna go that's why you'll never find eagles and chickens together I have some witnesses here in the house you will never find the eagle coming down to the to the level of a chicken and say hey let's discuss how we're gonna fly no then why do we do that stuff in life why do we negotiate our hearts why do we negotiate our peace why do we negotiate our joy no get 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 an anointing be different listen being anointed often mean you will be overlooked undervalued and missed you say give me scripture i'll give you scripture david anointed by god the next king he's so anointed his family doesn't even invite him when the prophet comes to town he leaves him on the outside Yet when he walk, Samuel looks on the out and on the outside, is Samuel wants to anoint the outside. God tells Samuel, "Hey Samuel, you made this mistake once. You appointed Saul as king." By the way, let me just throw this out for you. When when Samuel made the mistake of Saul, this is a mistake, by the way. When Samuel anointed Saul, he didn't anoint Saul with a ram's horn. He anointed Samuel a Saul with a bowl why man's choice oh come on am i helping of theology saul was never god's choice that's why he looked for david and when he found david as a small boy in the field worshiping him he anointed him he started the process and that's why when david walked in and got anointed by samuel he got sent back to the sheep because between your anointed time and your appointed time is always a period of time Let me say that again. Your anointed time and your appointed time is always a period of time. That called period of the time is the testing of your heart. Say, so where do you get that from? I'll give you another scripture. Joseph got a dream. Tells his brothers, listen, all of you guys are going to bow down to me. They say, no, we're not going to bow to you. We will throw you into a pit. They throw him into a pit. He gets sold into Egypt, the economical system of the day. There he goes. And he's righteous. And for his righteousness and his integrity, he gets thrown in prison a second time from pit to prison from being right he's not wrong he just told the people i have a big dream they said the big dream uh, sabota you go to the pit my friend there they go to the pit he's in the pit what now god you gave me a dream yeah but the pit is going to sort your character out then he gets sold into egypt come on are you guys with me then Potiphar's wife she's nice She's a nice looking girl. She looks to Joseph. She's like, hey, the, I like Hebrew boys. You know what I'm talking about? Come on, guys. Are you, are you okay? Joseph says, no, no, you're too old. I don't like you. He runs. Just one thing, by the way, whenever you run away from adultery, please take your clothes with you. He runs butt naked. Everybody sees Joseph running naked. He says, I didn't do it. Nobody will believe you. Are you with me? Because you're naked. Where's your clothes? That's all. Let me put it like this. It's the same thing to say to people, we're living together, but we're not sleeping together. Whatever. You can put up a massive board outside your house. Massive, huge. We are not sleeping together. Nobody will believe you. You've already sold your testimony when you started to live together. Then many young people today and older people too know it's more economical. It's economical for you on this side of earth, but it's very expensive for your soul. Yeah, it's true. No, it's, it's economical. And no, 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 it will cost you. It costs you everything. I sat the other day with a young couple and you know uh, as a rule i don't do marriage counseling anymore because i have too much you know i've got other stuff to do i've got pause that can do these things but the, the point is i sat of a couple and you can see when young people and old people have slept together you can see they have devaluated covenant 
And then I asked him a very simple question. I said, why do you want anybody to marry you in the church? They looked at me funny. Like, what do you mean? I said, why do you want to come to church and get married here? No, but you're anointed. I'm like, it doesn't, why do you want to get married in church? You're living like hell outside there. They didn't say it like that exactly. I said it like this. I said, I pick up, you have slept together. Have you slept together? Yes. I said, why? I said, no, we've been long together, you know. I still understand it. But it still doesn't give me the answer. Why have you given something up? In other words, let me rephrase it. Why have you opened up your gift before Christmas? God cannot go outside of His Word. If you break His Word, you break His Word. Yeah. No, but it was just once. No, yeah, I don't understand. Your soul have just got tied. Your spirit man just gone open. And whoever you've slept with, you've become one with. You did it outside God's Word. So He's right now, He's not in this relationship. And for you to get it right before the Lord, you have to repent first that you broke His Word. And when you've repented that you've broken His Word and ask Him permission to actually marry, then He might get involved again. But right now, we can't marry you because you're not in wholeness. You're in sin. You see, if you start to talk like that, people get uncomfortable. They're like, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa thought it's okay no it's not okay your soul is not up for sale your soul is the most expensive thing you have it costs Jesus everything do not negotiate your soul can we have a passion for purity again are you with me I remember my dad I'll tell you a story and then I'll go to one or two things I remember my dad you know I would bring I was always this young flamboyant guy so I'll bring a, a girl there and as I bring the girl home my, my dad will just like <laughs> he will just shake his head like no and then the, then and he always said to me marry Shannon she's pure she's whole she's clean he said that's your wife just get on of it and I would bring this I said no but you know Lord ach, dad you know I always had my excuses and he never, never, ever, ever, ever did I bring anybody home that he approved of. Ever. He's just like, it's not good for you. And so, here's my point. And so, praise be to God. God eventually said to me, please, this is your wife. Marry her. Okay, but here's the thing. I eventually got the revelation. Do you know how much money I spent? And ladies that I don't even know anymore. If I can get my money back. But are you understanding it? But I paid a price for lessons that I could have spared myself if I just listened to my father. If I can give any person advice here, choose right. Choose single. Because single means whole. We told you it's a deficit. If anything needs to be added to you so that you can find you, you're lost already. Can I say that again? If anything needs to be added to you for you to find you, you're already lost. That means you need Jesus. You don't need a girl. You need Jesus. You don't need a boy. You need Jesus. You don't need a car. You need a Jesus. You don't need a job. You need Jesus. Yeah, come on. And so what I have a passion for, I have a passion for what Pastor Given is busy doing. I have a passion to see people rising up with a passion for purity, for a passion for wholeness, for a passion for power. But I understand it's going to happen through us worshiping the right God for the right reasons, for the right motives. Then we will rise up in with eagle's wings. We will run and not grow weary. We will walk and not faint because we trust in the Lord our God.
Come on, are you with me? Come on, give him 10 seconds of praise, everybody online. Yeah, come on. Come on. 10 seconds quickly, everybody, give him some praise. Give him some praise, give him some honor. So, so this lady, she broke the alabaster jar because there was something worth giving. Because she lived long enough to understand that her oil don't fix. Her perfume does not make whole. Are you with me? This is the problem of sin. Sin wears off. Let me tell you how sin works. The Bible says, and sin when it's full grown gives birth to death. Quickly throw up the scriptures, book of James. Sin when it's full grown gives birth to death. This is how it works. For you to keep on or for, for let's use porn as an, as an example. You'll watch porn. It triggers certain things in your, in, your, in your body. You get a certain fix out of it. You feel satisfied to a certain level. But now you're just watching porn on a certain level. So you're watching a certain form of nudity. Now what the devil does with you, you start to feel okay by watching just naked men or naked women. And you feel okay by just watching it. Now that spirit is going to walk with you. But he's not going to do it quickly. He's going to move with you slowly. Because if he moves with you too quickly, you're going to understand that you're in deception. So he has to move with you slowly because at the end it's steal, kill, destroy. Satan game is destruction. But for him to take you to destruction, he needs to steal from you. And the word steal is a Greek word kleptomania, which means to take something without you seeing. And it's a slow taking. It's not quick. It's not like this, just grabbing something and they, that's not the word klepto. The word klepto means to remove something from you so slowly you are present, yet you are giving away because you're not seeing what's busy happening. That's the word steal. And so you watch porn to a certain extent. I'm just telling you this is how it works. But now that's not enough. Now you need to go, go over to seeing more certain other stuff. So you need to add to it. Now sin is starting to grow. Now pictures won't do it anymore. Now you're, now you're starting to watch videos. And you and I think, many people, this is why people, many people are, are not living lives full of power. They're starting to watch things, this movies and porn and whatever. Then they think if they pray to God and say, Lord, I'm sorry that everything is fine. That is, acknowledgement is not repentance. Confession is not change. Repentance means I've walked like this. I change my mind. I turn around and I walk the other direction. That's the word repentance. But here's the big... <laughs> you cannot repent unless the Holy Spirit turns you. And when you repent, you need the Holy Spirit to take you back where you went. So many people are not repenting, they're remorsing. That's the difference between heaven and hell for you. Because Judas repented, the Bible says. Peter repented. But Peter's in heaven, Judas is in hell. So why did Judas, oh, can I go there for two seconds? Why did, why did Judas, Judas not make heaven? It's very simple. Because the Bible says Judas repented, right? Judas repented. And then he gave back the coins which he bought Jesus with, or 30 pieces of silver which they sell Jesus off. And then what happens is Judas goes and he hangs himself. So what is that? Judas is trying to get right standing with God based on his actions. He hangs himself to get right with God again because he feels sorry. Peter also repents, but he doesn't go to a tree to hang himself. 
He goes to the Lord that can restore him. Because self-righteous acts will not restore you. Jesus restores you. <laughs> Are you there? Are you guys okay? Come on, just give Jesus 10 seconds of praise here. And so what happens is that sin grows. That's how men fall into adultery, by the way. Their women are not enough for them anymore. Then they have to introduce something else. Oh, I don't know if this church is ready, if we can go there. But they, they introduce other things to make it spicy. No, only thing you have to add to get anything spiced up is the Holy Spirit. Come on, are you a I've been married for 17 years to one beautiful woman. And I can tell you the truth, God keeps a marriage working. Whenever He's removed, you don't have the Trinity present anymore. Love does not make a marriage work, by the way. It's the application of knowledge that makes a marriage work. Because if love made marriages work, if love made relationships work, why is there so many divorced people? Love does not make something work. It's the application of knowledge that makes something work. Love leads you to knowledge. Let me apply that to Jesus and I'm going to be done. Then we will prophesy. The reason why Mary broke the alabaster jar on Jesus because she, through the act of love, made a sacrifice with the faith in the knowledge that He can set me free. He that the Son sets free is free indeed. But once Mary was set free by Jesus, she needed to apply her freedom continuously to stay free. Because He'll free you, but it's your responsibility to stay in relationship with Him. Oh, I'm preaching too good tonight. Come on, just give Jesus some praise. Are you, are you there? That's why the enemy, if you ever wanted to know, again I say, if you ever wanted to know what God values, look at what the devil attacks. God values authority. What does the devil attack? Authority. We're living in an age right now. Have you noticed everybody has an opinion of what church must be? Akastikar. Where do you read that? Hey. No, you're not the church. Unless you're in the assembly of believers, you will get nothing done in your life. The Bible says, with two or more are gathered in my name, I am in the midst of them. That doesn't mean you're a church. The word church the word is the Greek word ecclesia. The word ecclesia, ek means out, kaleo means called. It, it's a military term. The word ecclesia, it's not even a church name. It's a, it's a military term. It means to take over. It means to be the governing force. It means to call the shots in all the hierarchies of society, education, medicine, whatever. It means to take over. How are you going to take over all by yourself? Huh? Come on, think of me. Yeah, my Agassi car. Yeah, you nothing. Without a person next to you, you're going to get nowhere. Come on, are you guys there? It's like saying this, I, can, I am the church. It's like taking a car without petrol. It looks like a car, but it's going nowhere. Unless you put something into it. For a, for a Christian to grow, you have to put them into fellowship. It is the fellowship of the saints that fixes you. That's why on... That's why... I, and I love it, you know, I love, the, I love all of this stuff. But I, I promise you, there's something that happens in fellowship. That you can never hide from. My dad had something that he always did of us as children. And he, you know, I will, I will never forget this about him. He always, when we, when we met one another, and I, I'm so thankful for good parents. Because, but one of the things he often did with me, he'll, he'll say, look at me. <laughs> then I look at him. And he had, got, he had piercing blue eyes. And he'll look at me just for a second or two or three. And he'll keep his eyes upon me. 
and he'll start to write. <laughs> he had a little black book like this. I don't know why it was black, but anyway. He writes certain things down. Then we talk. And then as we talk, God starts to speak to him and it says to me, so tell me, why have you allowed this? I'm like, what are you talking about? It's like, I see. And I'm like, no, you, no, there's nothing like that. It's like, you can't lie to me. Eventually, you see, that's why you need spiritual fathering. Because a father covers you. Come on, that's why you need a father. So that's why spiritual fathering is so important in the season. Because a father covers. Oh, you, you will not know what I'm talking about unless you've lost the spiritual father. If you've lost the father, you've gone naked in the spirit. It's true. Come on, are you, are you there? Eventually, I'll tell you the tr true, 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 absolute true in our lives. Eventually, I drew so close to my spiritual father, I drew everything from him. I wanted everything he carried because I knew you can't take your anointing with you to heaven. It needs to stay here. So I drew everything from him, everything I could. Eventually, he got so close to me and I got so close to him. And eventually, we both got so close to God that whenever there will be any disagreement in my marriage, he'll dream about it. So shut <laughs> So Shannon and I will have, you know, we'll have disagreements. Then the next day, my dad will call me. He'll say, hey, why did you talk like that to your wife? I'm like, when did she call you? He said, I didn't, I, she didn't call me. God told me. I'm like, how did the Lord tell you that? He says, God doesn't like that. You have to be in unity. And so I learned very quickly in my life early on, that both God and my spiritual father, my dad, both of them knew my number. And so I couldn't sin just like I wanted to because God had his eyes upon me. If we still, let me leave it like this. If we just sin because we want to sin and we think we can get away with it, we don't understand Christianity. Come on guys, are you with me? There's nothing like casual porn. There's nothing like casual drinking. There's nothing like casual drugs. There's nothing like that. It is what it is. Sin is sin and let's call it sin. Are you there? It means to miss your understanding of who God made you to be. It means to miss the mark, miss the design, miss the understanding, miss everything. When you sin, you just miss everything. You miss it. To give you an idea, it's like, it's like, uh, my, it's like my kids will walk out and I'm like, uh-uh, back in. Know your worth, please. We don't sell things here. Sacrifice. Save me sacrifice. It has to cost you something. A Christianity without blood is not Christianity. It has to cause sacrifice. And we're living in a time and a day where so many things need to be acceptably, acceptable. Acceptably, that's a new word acceptable yet the word of the Lord chucks many things out because the Lord does not make room for all things that we approve of we need to make room for the Lord are you there so just because we dress differently in 2022 doesn't mean Christianity has changed doesn't mean the word of the Lord has shifted worship is still worship and it's gonna cost us something if it doesn't cost you something it's like one of my good friends, uh, you know, he's trusting the Lord for something to do now, a massive thing that he needs to do for God. It's a couple of million rand. He's a couple of weeks off. He gave away everything. Everything. That will seem like a contradiction for many of you. He says, I need to give everything so that I can push myself into a boundary to trust God more. I said, but you need all, I, I thought to myself, but you need all of that money still. He says, I... And I, and I thought, I didn't even say this to him, but I knew, I knew where he was pushing himself. He was taking him to a cell where it's only God that can do it for him. But for him to take himself there, push himself into faith, so he gave it all. I'm like, that's radical faith. Unless we become radical about our God, how on the earth do we believe we're going to move anything? Come on, guys, are you with me? 
That's why here at Empower Church, we are radical about God. We are radical about worship. We are radical about the Bible. We are radical about our Jesus. We are radical about the Holy Spirit. Why? We believe He is not a not a, just the only way. He's the way. He's not a option. He's the only option. He is the only life. There is no other. There is no other name given unto men by which man can be saved. But the name of Jesus Christ, where every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess to the glory of the Father. Are you there? Come on. And so this is how we break free tonight. You need to repent. You need to choose yourself and walk back to Jesus. Are you guys okay? You need to choose yourself and walk back to Jesus. Can I tell you how is the attitude of repentance? The attitude of repentance. This is the attitude of repentance. This is the attitude of repentance. I just want everybody, can I ask that the guys stop moving? Just want us to sit. The attitude of repentance means that you'll do everything what you can to get an encounter of God. Zacchaeus, small little Zacchaeus, small little Zacchaeus, climbs a tree, a sycamore tree. He goes out on the limb. The Bible says, here comes Jesus. Jesus stops and he looks up. He says, hey Zacchaeus, today I'm going to eat with you. To eat with a man in New Testament time wasn't just a cheap thing. It was an invitation to communion. It was an invitation to covenant. So a man goes out on a limb for Jesus. Oh, I can preach this all different directions. Jesus stops for him. And he makes the invitation to covenant. Come, let's have fellowship. The Bible does not record any discussion about sin. What it does record is a man full of repentance. Zacchaeus says, Lord, if I have cheated anybody, which means he has, I will give back four times what I've taken. Can I tell you? What led Zacchaeus to that level of repentance? The goodness of Jesus Christ. Jesus didn't discuss Zacchaeus' sins. He sat with Zacchaeus. He valued the person more than the actions. And the actions changed because the person did. You will never shift your destiny unless you change. You can shout as loud as you can. You can do a lot of things. You can read all the motivational books you want. But unless you go to Jesus, you will leave your life empty and void because you have not found the one that gives you true life and meaning of it all. Life is found in nobody else but Jesus. The meaning of life is found in nobody else, not in the arms of a lover, not in the arms of your husband, not in the arms of your wife, Wholeness is found in the embrace of Jesus Christ. That's why his arms are nailed wide open, because arms that are nailed wide open accepts all that comes to him. You have to understand that about yourself. You have to push to get to Jesus, because he can reset it all. And so tonight, I want to challenge you. We've got many people on all our platforms here in the church. Many people, wonderful, praise God. But what you want from the Lord is to come in right standing of Him again. How do you come into right standing? You choose. That's it. And it's not a heavy. It's come home. It's just come home. The Lord has already made up His mind. But you have to acknowledge that and come home.
Are you there? Are you with me? Come on, guys. Are you, are you catching what I'm saying? When I was a young man, I'll, I'll just give you an example. 18 years old. I was with my friends that, it, that um, drove back home with the car that my dad gave me and, and did things I shouldn't have been doing. And as I drove the car back home that night, I messed the car up and eventually my brother-in-law needed to come and fetch me and he took me home. And long story short, my dad didn't talk to me a couple of days and because I messed the car up so badly. And when he would eventually speak to me, I was waiting for wrath and fire and brimstone. And so this was his words to me. He said, listen, he said, I understand why you did what you did to a certain extent. And then he said these words to me. He said this, he said, but have this one on me. He said, I'll pay for everything. I'll fix everything. You just choose to live a better life for yourself. And, I, and it baffled my mind. Why will he treat me so good? I cost him money, cost him a car, cost him a lot of things. Yet he treated me like a son and not like a slave. Before I met my wife, I was involved with a, with a young lady, which again, I shouldn't have been in. Eventually that broke up, my heart got broken, I got into a car, I drove all the way, I left my phone at home, I just left. And eventually, when I got to it, I thought to myself, I have to phone home. Because if I phone home, maybe because I thought they're going to be so angry at me because I was away for the, um, the whole of the day and they were phoning my phone crazy and it was just ringing there in the home. But I made up my mind, I'm going to, I'm going to leave this God. I'm going to leave this girl and I'm just, I'm just going to look for another life. And so I'll never forget it. I, I, I rode my little Opel Cadet. I had a blue Opel Cadet 140C. I drove that little car on it, played 363. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And I drove my little car. I had my cigarettes with me and my drink. And there I drove the little car. Blessed be that I was worshiping, but I was messed up. Eventually I thought to myself, where, you know, you need to phone home. So I stopped somewhere there. I don't even know where. I, and, I, and I thought to myself, and this was God, I think, speaking to me. And the Lord said to me, well, that, that stage I didn't know his voice like I know his voice now. The Lord said to me, phone home. And so I phoned home. And you know who answered? My dad answered. I said, where are you, son? I said, please don't be mad. It was my first word. He said, I'll never be mad. He said, I don't care what you've done and I don't care where you are. What I do care about is you coming home. Where are you? I said, I don't know where I am. <laughs> he said, because I was fighting from the ticket box. You know the ticket box? You know, that's, that I, was, I didn't have money either, either, so I needed to phone the operator. It was heavy. But anyway, got the home. <laughs> so that gives away a little bit of the age. But anyway, the point is, my dad said, call the guy that's closest. I called the guy there, there at the mobile. I said, come here. My dad wants to talk to you. I gave him the phone. He said, where are you? And the guy explained. My dad said, okay, what you do now is you drive like this, you drive like that. You go, you go to your grandma in Bloemfontein. It's going to take you about this much time. You're going to get there. We'll phone everybody. They're waiting for you. And I was 170 kilometers or so off from Bloemfontein. Here's the bottom line of the story. When I came in with my car that night, late at night, I was about 11 o'clock at night. Here stood my grandfather and my grandmother. They were in their late 70s already. Here the two old precious people stand and they stand like this arms wide open I get out of the car I didn't have money for nothing I I, I had enough money to get a it just tells you how much I, I'm always you know clean conscious and looking good and smelling good I I went to buy one toothbrush and a small little toothpaste and I bought axe like a little five milliliter thingy it's like somebody the other day asked me do you what is that that you're wearing? X, I'm like, X, uh, X, no. It's not X that I wear, don't, whatever. Oh, I'm teasing, guy. The point is, love sent me home. Love set me free. What sets you free here tonight? It's the love of God. It's the goodness of God that leads you to repentance.
And so, before I give you words from the Father, because you see, the prophetic is the easiest thing to do, because it's relaying His voice to you. That we can do easily, but for you to come home tonight, you have to understand, like Mary understood, that she is broken. And unless she's made whole by the, by the blood of the Lamb, it's impossible to become whole. And that's why I'm saying to you, it's not when you become whole and when you act, when you, when you worship truly, it, it's a sacrifice. It's a sacrifice. When I stood next to my mom, seeing her going into glory, it cost me a sacrifice. Next week I needed to do a funeral sacrifice. See my dad going to glory, worship him, sacrifice. Next week after that, uh, standing on this pulpit, again praising him, worshiping the Lord, sacrifice. They didn't understand what was busy happening, just trusted the Lord, sacrifice. When I stood next to my best friend, and he's seeing, seeing him going, well, he, he being in glory already, sacrifice. Sacrifice, doing his funeral, sacrifice. Going on, giving everything for God across the country, sacrifice. Sacrifice, sacrifice, sacrifice. It will cost you something if, if you want to be known in heaven. Sacrifice. It costs the sun everything. And do you think you are different than the sun? No. You are like the sun. It will cost you sacrifice. My reward is people. My reward is people that is giving me across the nation. My reward is seeing sons and daughters becoming free. My reward is walking into the church on a Sunday morning and a Sunday evening and seeing light in people's eyes. My reward is going to Durban and seeing people being set free. My re that is my reward. My reward is people. Come on, are you there? Because I've already made up my mind. I want what He wants, people. We love people. Oh, come on, give yourself a praise offering, man. And so I want to make an invitation, if I can. I've been talking very long. Have you learned tonight? What you need to do, you need to make the, make the exchange of Jesus. You need to walk over to Jesus, break the alabaster jar, and say, I'm done with me. Here am I. Here am I. As I am. Take hold of me. And I promise you, when Jesus takes hold of you, <laughs> everything changes. But it will cost us something. So I'm going to make it easy tonight. I want us to pray a prayer and I, I'm going to pray for you. And as I pray with you, you decide for the Lord tonight. You choose Jesus because He's already chosen you. That's the truth. Then if there's sin in your life, walk away from it. Say no. Burn the porn. Delete the cachet. put restrictions on the stuff for yourself whatever it takes but make sure that you don't do what will cost you eternity because do not be mistaken sin will take you to hell it's casual poor no nothing like that casual drinking no casual sex no There isn't something like that. Sin is sin. And we need to call it what it is. For you to be free from it, you need to name it what it is. Are you there? Come on. Can you sense the presence of God that is here? Why is He here? Because He wants you to be free. And He wants you to not feel condemned. Because we're not going to shame anybody into heaven. Let me say that again. You're not going to shame anybody into heaven. You're going to tell them how good the Father is. Then they have a choice to come home. Be careful of people that tell you they love you all the time. Yet their own lives do not bear fruits of the kingdom. The fruits of the kingdom is submission. Obedience, servanthood, humility, joy, love, peace, kindness, long-suffering, patience. Be careful of any brother or sister calling themselves a Christian and they don't bear those fruits. I'm sick and tired, 17 years of ministry, I'm sick and tired of people telling me, I can sleep for you, but they stab you in the back. I can sleep for you, but they don't follow God. 
tired of fake Christians. We're in a war zone right now. We don't need fake soldiers. We need the ones that says, I will give anything for my Jesus. We need the ones that will stand up and say, whatever it costs me, I'm with you. We need true men and women of God. We don't need the fake and the flaky ones anymore. I'm tired of fake Christians. I don't know if you are, but I'm tired of that. Really, by the love of God, I'm just, I just want to see the real deal. Are you with me? Come on, guys. And so tonight, I'm going to call upon you to call upon the name of the Lord and be set right again with Him. Because it, at the end, it doesn't matter anything except Jesus. I've spoken the truth to you tonight. It's your opportunity to respond to Him. And I love you. That's why I tell you the truth. I won't tell you, if I don't love you, I won't speak to you the truth. I'll tell you things that will tr trickle your ears, but will still send you to hell. No, I'll rather tell you the truth and have the opportunity to offend you. But if I can offend you into the kingdom, so be it. Let's use that then. Let's get you into the kingdom. Let's get you to Jesus because Jesus will change you. Are you there? So, Father, I want to pray right now in this holy moment, Lord, I am aware that you are already working with many people. Not even online, I can see many, many people. And so, Father, I want to pray in this night that people will choose you. Lord, that they'll choose you, that they'll choose freedom in Jesus' name. If you made that choice tonight, you say, I'm choosing Jesus, I'm choosing freedom, then you get to your feet and you come to the front. And just do it, guys. Tonight, be like Nike. Just do it. One, two, three, let's go. Come on, there's people that need to make choices. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Step away from your sin and come back home. Come, 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 come. Quickly, 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 quickly. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, everybody that's online. Everybody that's online, comment your names, comment your names, comment your names. Comment your names, come on. There's more people that need to step away from lifestyles of sin. Come guys, 10 seconds, act, act, act tonight, act tonight, act tonight, act tonight. Come on. Can we as a church, can everybody stand for me please? I want everybody that's in front of you, why don't you just lift your hands for the Lord. Father, I want to pray tonight. Can every one of you that are here, can you please stretch out your hands? I'm going to lay hands now on these precious people. I want us just to pray together and then we're going to trust God. I just feel that there's more people that must respond. I'm going to give you one more call. Why don't you just jump out of your seats and come. If there's anything tonight, anything, anything that you're not sure of, if you're not sure of if you're, if you're exactly where you're supposed to be of the Lord, then I want you to jump out of your seats and just come to me, please. So, Father, in the name of Jesus the Christ, Father, I thank you for every person that is here in this night. And, Lord, I want to pray right now, and I, and everybody that's online, I want to give you guys the opportunity as well. Comment those names, guys. Throw out those comments. Go, go, go. Father, I want to thank you that right now in this moment, that, Lord, that these precious people, Father, each and every one of them, Father, I want to pray over their lives right now, Lord Jesus, that you'll touch them in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, that they are not hirelings. They are sons and daughters of the Most High God. And Father, I want to pray in this night, Lord Holy Spirit, thank you for resetting, resetting innocence over their lives. Thank you, Father, that they can choose tonight righteousness of the kingdom. Thank you that they can choose tonight, Lord, to be in right standing of you. And so, Holy Spirit, I pray, touch them tonight in the name of Jesus. Just touch them, Father. Thank you, Lord.
Kilo, Mora Bacatre Beandro, Bocora Bacatre Bester Beandro, Mora Bacere Beandro, Bocora Bacatre Bester Beandro, Bocora. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. As the people are online as well, I sense there's a person here, it might be one or two more than one. I just want us to keep on standing, please. There's something wrong of the intestines. There's something wrong of the intestines. Something wrong of the intestines. Quickly come to me, please. There's something wrong. Something wrong of the digestive system. And I just feel the Lord as I was praying, you know, the Lord gave me a word of knowledge. He says, pray, I'll heal. Come. If that's you online tonight, just come and go for it. Come and come and come and. Why don't you just put your hands where the pain is or the problem is? Can we stretch out our hands, guys, church? Come on. The Bible says Jesus heals, right? Come on. He restores. He heals. So, Father, just put your hand where the pain is, please. Father, or wherever the, whatever what is not working like it should, just put your hand where you think it is. Father, I want to pray right now in the name of Jesus. Father, thank you that we can break. We can break. We can break the power of sickness in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, that I can break the power of the evil one over the digestive system. Thank you, Jesus, that we speak healing right now into these bodies in Jesus' name. And Father, I thank you that as we touch, Lord, that there'll be healing that comes into these bodies, that the digestive system will work as it should, optimally and naturally in Jesus' name. Satan, we bind you over these bodies in the name of Jesus. And Father, I release your healing right now in Jesus Christ's name. Be healed. 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 There's a person here, it's just one or two, I don't see more than that. In the spine, in the spine, I see it, in the spine, there's something in the spine. There's some of the bones that are not as it's supposed to be. In the spine, it might be online as well. Just the spine. Then we're going to worship the Lord and then we're going to honor God. Is that fine? I just want to pray for the spines. Jesus will just touch the spines. Come on church. Healing is the most natural, supernatural thing we must do. Because it's not us doing it, it's Jesus doing it and us trusting Him to do it. Come on, are you there? Just, just put your hands, maybe just... Thank you, Lord Jesus. Just one hand on the spine. Father, I want to pray right now in the name of Jesus. Father, I want to pray for these spines right now in Jesus Christ's name. Father, we, I ask you right now, Lord, that these spines, Lord, that they will turn up and correct, Lord, as it should be. Father, I pray that any form of discomfort will go right now in Jesus' name. Any form of unnatural anything, Lord, that it gets removed right now in the name of Jesus. And Father, I pray, Lord, I pray that these spines, these bones that be made by you, Lord, and all that is connected and connected to this, Lord Jesus, that it shifts and it changes right now. We thank you for that, Lord, in Jesus Christ's name. Be healed. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, touch them, Lord. 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 Tou
don't touch them tonight. Touch them. Touch, 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 touch. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. You break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. There is power. There is power. In the name of Jesus. Let us worship the Lord. There is power in the name of Jesus. Come on. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Come on, let's worship. Power. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Come on. There is power in the name of Jesus. Come on, let's lift our voices. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. One more time. There is power. Break every chain. Break every chain. There's power. Let's sing it again. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power. Break every chain, break every chain. Listen, everybody, lift your hands to the Lord. Everybody online, lift your hands to God. Our people here tonight, as the Spirit of the Lord is here, the people that didn't come out, I feel the Lord is saying to me to say to you, move with the Lord while you have opportunity. Move with God. So I'm going to pray with you tonight, and you pray with me, and we go back to the Lord. And we'd make a decision tonight. We say well, it's Jesus that we want. It's Jesus that we seek. And it's Jesus that we're after. And because we're in love of Jesus, it means we need to unfriend certain things. Because we found a friend that sticks closer than a brother. His name is Jesus. Are you there? So use the unfriend button again in your life and unfriend certain patterns and demonic strongholds and demonic strategies and sinful patterns. Unfriend that tonight because you found a friend that sticks closer than a brother. Proverbs 18, 24. His name is Jesus. So let's pray together. Lift your hands. Everybody online, lift your hands to God. Let's pray. Everybody on stage, lift your hands. Let's pray together. Save me, Heavenly Father. I come to you in this night. In the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you, Father, that I can bind every sinful act, repent of every sinful habit in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, thank you that you forgive me. Thank you that you make me whole. Thank you that you reset my innocence in Jesus' name. Lord Jesus, I choose you as my friend. I choose you as my Lord. I choose you as my Savior in Jesus' name. Father, help me by the power of the Holy Spirit 
to say no to the devil and yes to God. In Jesus' name. Let's give him some praise. Ten seconds of praise. Listen, I, I want to give you advice tonight and I'm going to give you two calls to action. Rehard comes along. I want to give you two things to do. Are you there? No, let, let, I'm going to give you three things. Thing number one is whenever you, the sinful act or the sinful habit comes again, because often we'll preach, but we won't tell you how to overcome. This is how you do it. Every time you want to, you say, Lord, Holy Spirit, help me. You give it to God. Every time you want to, want to flip to that place, you say, Lord, Holy Spirit, help me. And this is what you do. You pause. You pause. Listen to me, church. You pause. You say, Lord, help me. Give Him time to help. Just pause. You'll see He's going to help. And then as soon as you've paused, step number two, walk away. In other words, close the phone, switch off the TV, stop the conversation, and leave that space. <laughs> Point number three, each time you do this, it's going to become easier and easier to say no. And the devil would have lost that space. Whatever God, the devil loses, God fills. You'll never lose a friend that God gave you. You'll never lose a relationship that God sent you. You'll never lose money if God is your provider. You'll never lose your wholeness. You'll never need to sell yourself or give yourself away for anybody that's not sent by God. Choose Jesus. Again, I say, say, Lord, Holy Spirit, help me. Pause. Let Him help. Point number three, remove yourself out of the situation, out of the temptation. The Bible says the following words, God will not allow you to be tempted above anything that you cannot bear. He will provide a way out every single time. He will provide a way out. Choose Jesus. He chose you. Come on, church. It's powerful. If... Second thing I want you to do tonight. I need you to come to Pastor Shamain and say, Pastor Shamain, I want to serve. I want to be a servant in the house of God. Give me work. Let her give you work. We have thousands of people in this church. We need more servants. We don't need more superheroes. We have one. His name is Jesus. We need more servants. Sons and daughters serve. So come tonight. Come to her and say, here am I. Use me. We'll give you a space. Even if you just stand and wave at people, it's okay. At least somebody feels welcomed. But serve in the household of God. Are you with me? Last thing I want you to do is honor the Lord. Tonight we're going to honor God of our giving. And it's going to cost us something. Not because we have to, but because we're in love. The purest form of giving comes not out of responsibility, but comes out of the duty of the understanding of love. I love Him, therefore I honor Him, because everything I have belongs to Him. Are you there? Can we respond, please? Can you feel the Spirit of the Lord? Why is He here? Because He's proving that this book, which is alive, is true. Everything is written. He will back up by His Spirit. And so let's honor the Lord. And then we'll take it from there. Is that fine? So guys that are online, come on, let's honor the Lord. Everybody that's inside, let's go and honor the Lord. They're at the back. Come, come, come. Let's worship the Lord. Let's honor Him. Let's sing that song again as we go for it. Let's honor the Lord. Come. Let's honor the Lord. Let's love the Lord. There is power in the name of Jesus.
let's sing again. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. There is power, there is power. Stand. Why don't you stand with me so long? Just before we, I wanted us just to do two things before we go. First and foremost, I just want to introduce Riachard. Riachard Nalia next to me. Why don't you give him a God bless you? And Riachard heads up our, Riachard heads up our student ministry. So, uh, our young people ministry. And that's for the ages of 18 to 25. So if you feel in that bracket, or you are in that age bracket, I want you to please come and speak to Riachar afterwards there by the minor hall, won't you please? And get connected. We don't want any person to journey in this season alone. Are you with me? That's why God is raising up people like Riachar in this hour, young men that are pure and wants God. So all the young people that are here, 18 to 25, or if you feel between that age gap and you're 16, you feel like 25, he's okay. He'll love you, he'll pass you, he'll look after you. But I want to make sure that you guys are connected. Is that fine? So 18 to 25, please come to Riachar and get connected. Amen. Why don't you give him just a God bless you. Thank you, Riachar. And by the way, I just want to say that publicly. You know, I'm so proud of, I, of Pastor Given. I'll say that because I really feel that right now. Just want to say where well, I heard him. He shouted. I just heard him just now. You know, he's, he has one of the biggest youth currently that I know of in Pretoria. Um, we're not talking about, you know, 50 or 100. Or, he's got hundreds of young people that comes. He's got one of the biggest and he's one of the most humblest. He has humility written all over him. He, what you don't know about him, he ministers with thousands of young people on a weekly basis with Pastor Derek in schools. So he's, he might look friendly, but he's dangerous in the spirit. So let's just, just want to honor him. Um, you know, our future is very bright if it looks like given pure, whole, and on passion for Jesus. Lastly, I want to say, ladies, ladies, and you have to be an Eve to be a lady. Saturday, next week, Saturday is the ladies' day. My beautiful wife will lead it past a year in Pretoria. Pastor Lana is going to lead it in Durban. Um, Pastor Lazal is going to lead it in Secunda, and Hunt is going to lead it in Cape Town. And so it is the last time to register for the other locations. Pretoria, you still have tonight and during this week. What we don't want is anybody to miss out. So please register. We already have just over 350 plus ladies and counting. So we want to see this auditorium filled of women worshiping God. It is the hour. If you ever want to know where God's plan is at, look at a woman. He has a secret plan of women. You say, where do you get that? Well, when God made a plan, He went to Mary. Okay. Oh, I can preach that. <laughs> Lastly, I want to say this. Come to Pastor Charmaine and say, here am I. Use me. Don't be in this house. Hold of faith and don't be connected. Amen. Everybody lift your hands. Let me pray for you. Did you learn tonight? Did the Holy Spirit touch you tonight? Yeah, come on, we're not afraid of the truth. We love the truth. He is a person. Father, I want to pray for every single person that I see here. I thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, if I, as I see this beautiful group of people and all the people online, Lord, and everybody that follows us nationally and internationally, Father, I bless every single one of them in the name of Jesus. 
And I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that your power rests on them. In Jesus' name. Help me, I, I just want to say this before I end the prayer. I want to say to your whole family, you have to get ready for the power of God. It's going to hit your family like a flood. God's going to come and visit your whole family. I see the Spirit of the Lord being poured out on your family. I hear the Lord say to me, I'm going to say to you, every sacrifice you've made up to this day has touched and has felt and has heard, been seen. I see it touching the nostrils of God. And I hear the Lord say, I'm going to pour out my Spirit from on high. Your prayers shall be answered. Your marriage shall be whole. God is going to touch your husband. He's going to touch your family. And everything is going to become whole. You need to take this word tonight because I see the Lord visiting your household. He's going to fix everything up for you. Your son is going to have a, uh, an encounter of Jesus Christ. The Lord's going to help you. I don't know what your name is, but the Lord's going to help you. I see Jesus' hand coming upon you. Your future is bright. Satan has tried everything to get you off course. He's tried to confuse you. He's tried to stop you. He belittles you. He tells you a lot of lies. I hear the Lord say, everything is a lie from the pit of hell. And I see how the Lord's hand is going to come and rest upon you. And you, God's going to do great things for you. I see business upon you. I see the anointing upon you. And I see the Lord's going to make a crooked path straight for you. But you have to seek the Lord as you're already doing. For your daughter, I see the hand of the Lord. She's like a doctor. She's going to fix many things. She's a fixer. She fixes stuff. That's why now already she, a natural inclination is to help. She just helps. But God's going to come upon your family in an unusual way. The Lord has seen you and the Lord has taken note of you. You have traveled many times to this church wanting an encounter from God. And I hear the Lord say, as you've done that, the Lord saw all the single sacrifices. And you have to get ready. God's going to touch your life and it's going to shoot like a shooting star. And no man is going to stop it. And I see the Lord saying, like with Joshua, he's going to, he's going to tell Satan physically to repay what he stole. It will be restored to you sevenfold. And there's nothing that the devil will do about that. God will repay you sevenfold. I say that to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Let it be done. Amen. Come on, let's just give Jesus some praise. Father, we love you. We bless you, Lord. We, you are our everything. Jesus, you are our passion. Lord, you are all that we are and all that we love. Father, we give you all the honor and all the praise now and forevermore. Jesus, the Son of the Most High God. Jesus, Lamb of God, we worship you and we praise you in empowered church. To God be the glory, to God be the praise, now and forevermore. Lord, let your kingdom come, let your will be done as it is in heaven. Let it be so on earth. Father, erect in this house a banner, Lord, of praise and worship like no other time. For Father, we love you, we love you, we love you, we love you in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you that we can say, blessed be the name of the Lord our God, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And if you agree of that prayer in power, give Jesus Christ a mighty shout of praise, won't you? Come on, give him a shout. Come on. Yeah, there's power. I want you to lift both of your hands. I want to pray for you. Father, I want to bless every single person. I pray, Lord, as they go into this week, may they be anointed. May they disappoint the devil many times. Father, I pray as they go in this week, may they, may, may they experience the closeness of your spirit. Father, set them up to heal people. Set them up to cast out devils. Set them up, Lord, this week to be a blessing. And above all, to be obedient to your word. In Jesus' name, empower church praise. And all God's people say, amen. amen and amen and amen and amen. Come on, 10 seconds more of praise. God bless you, every single person online. We'll check you again. Come on, let's just worship him. Let's just give him a shout of praise. Come on, 10 seconds of praise. Amen and amen. Power Church, we love you. Every single person that's been with us online, we love you very, very much. 
It is a good thing to be in the house of God. Amen. And so may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. I'll see you guys. EBI 2 will see you Tuesday night. Amen. Have a blessed night, guys. Have a blessed night. Thank you. Bless you.